Ripple Tools Complete combines, improves, and expands upon our popular Ripple Tools 1 and Ripple Tools 2 plugin sets. It includes 32 plugins organized into six themes for easy browsing. Let's look at a few that I find quite useful. In the helpers category, I like this cloner effect. Here in my timeline, I have a clip of some people in a park. I don't have clearance for this woman in the middle, so I'd like to remove her from the shot. I'll press the X key to select the clip, select the cloner template and press Q to make a connect edit. The cloner tool can be used to remove dust or dead pixels or objects from a scene. In this case, I want to remove this woman, so I'll move the target over her. If I hold the command key down, I can disable snapping. If I want to see more information in the inspector, I can use the quick tips pop-up menu to get information right in the viewer on how to use this template. And these quick tips are available for all of these templates. Now that I have the target in position, I'm going to disable the target so we don't see it, so it doesn't get in the way. And then I'll use the clone offset to replace the woman with some nearby pixels. I'll decrease the size a little bit by holding down the Option key, and then increase the feather. And just like that, I've removed her from the shot. Next, I have a flyover clip over this lake. I'd like to do some color correction, but I'd like to color correct the top of it different than the bottom. A great tool for this is the grad filter in the looks category. X, Q, and by default, there are two on-screen controls that let you move the top color and the bottom color. In the title inspector, you can use different colors for the gradient by right-clicking on the color tags. You can adjust its opacity and even change its type. The position of the gradient can also be keyframed. For example, at the beginning of the shot, I'd like the blue to be higher in the screen, perhaps like that. I'll spread these apart and set keyframes for the start and end of the gradient. Then moving forward, I want this one to come up a little bit and I'll move this one higher up off the screen and off to the left. And now when we play, you can see that those gradient endpoints animate to adjust to the scene. One of the transformers that I really like is the reflection effect. So here in my timeline, I have this very beautiful drone shot. I'll press X to select it select the reflection effect and press Q and it immediately puts that clip in a rounded mask on a reflective floor. In the title inspector, we can choose the color of that floor and we can also choose the roundness of the mask and disable it if we want. We can adjust the clip's position in X and Y and even in Z. However, if you push it back in Z space, it'll start to lift off the floor so instead of doing that, I recommend going to the camera position where you can then push the camera back in Z space and the clip remains untouched. The other interesting thing about animating camera rotation is that the rotation will be a little different because it's around the camera axis like that. I'll undo it as opposed to the clip rotation, which is around the clip axis. So you have options to do that either way and you can set keyframes and animate it either way. I'll rotate the clip slightly and move it off to the left a little bit. One thing I like to do in conjunction with the reflection effect is to use the text box effect. So I'll add that title. It creates a simple text box that will automatically resize to the text. So I'll select a different font and a different size. And then in the title inspector, I'll choose a different background color that better matches our scene. In the text effects category, the text scroll will do a great end credit. I'll select it and press W for an insert edit. Command minus to zoom out a little bit. It's animated by default and the speed of the animation is based on the duration of the text scroll. So you can simply make it longer or shorter in the timeline to speed it up or slow it down. To edit the text, I recommend going to the text inspector and you can drag down here and have full access to all the text to make any changes. In addition to the text, you have the option to add material to the drop zones. So if I go to the title inspector, I can click in this drop zone well here, and then I can click on a clip in either the project or the browser. In this case, I want to add this logo, so I'll click there. I'll click apply clip, double click on it right in the viewer, 
and shrink it down to fit the drop zone. If you don't want to see any other drop zones, you can disable them by clicking the checkboxes here. Those are just a couple examples of the 32 different templates available in Ripple Tools Complete. We feel that they're essential for any editor to have in their toolkit, and we hope you feel the same way.